Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about Ben Stiller's 2001 absurdist comedy offering Zoolander. Uh, and the film begins with the Prime Minister of Malaysia announcing plans to raise the minimum wage of garment workers. Uh, this is a policy that will have dire impacts on the profitability of the fashion industry, as that industry relies on exploiting workers in developing nations to maintain its profit margins. And so the secret cabal that runs the fashion industry appoints the eccentric Jacobum Magatu to find and train a male model to work as an assassin and kill the Malaysian Prime Minister. But not just any male model will do. Only the most vapid simpleton could be brainwashed into a killer in the scant 14 days that are available to Magatu. Derek Zoolander, Ben Stiller's character, is that male model. Zoolander is hysterically stupid, vain and self-absorbed, making him the perfect patsy for Magatu. However, Zoolander is also questioning his place in the fashion industry after losing the Male Model of the Year award to newcomer Hansel. That's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. The challenge is that Derek's currently disenchanted with the fashion business. The opportunity is that he ought to be easy to coast back with the promise of being the face of Magatu's new line, Derelict. Will Derek accept Magatu's job offer and become an unwitting assassin? Will the film pile ridiculous stunt casting after ridiculous stunt casting on top of each other? Will there be an incredibly nerdy gags buried in the blizzard of buffoonery? Will Derek ever perfect the new expression he's been working on for the last eight years? And the answer to these questions is never really in doubt, uh, but surprises are definitely not the point of this film. Uh, full throttle silliness is definitely the order of the day. So I don't generally watch a lot of films that bill themselves as out-and-out -out comedies. Um, I'll watch films that are funny, while being sort of other movies at the same time, but straight-up comedies, not so much. Uh, and I'm certainly not a fan of crass, gross-out, body fluids and embarrassment kind of comedies. The sort of thing that, you know, to a certain extent, originally launched Ben Stiller the stardom. Uh, you know, I've seen trailers for things like Meet the Parents and There's Something About Mary, and that's more than I need to see either of those movies, frankly. But despite all that, I like this film a lot. Uh, its humour is by no means subtle or especially insightful. You know, pointing out that some aspects of the fashion industry can be quite pompous and ridiculous is hardly a profound revelation. Uh, but Zoolander commits to its shtick, and for me, the ensemble works. Let's talk about why. So, a key to the film's success is Ben Stiller's performance in the main role. Derek Zoolander is vain and vapid and in some ways quite insecure, but at his heart and his core, he's basically well-intentioned. He's, he's not malicious in any way. Uh, Stiller does a great job of selling this preening, rather, frankly, rather buffoonish individual as someone who, you know, sort of actually, in a general way, wants the world to be a better place, um, even if his understanding of the best way he can do that is deeply flawed. He thinks, you know, the fact that he's beautiful is kind of what he has to offer. Uh, I also like that the film shows Derek grow and evolve a little bit as a person over the course of the film. Uh, he doesn't suddenly become much more intelligent or anything like that, but he does learn to overcome some of those insecurities I mentioned, uh, as well as to be a bit more actively thoughtful of others. Uh, if you told me before I watched this that a Ben Stiller comedy would deliver a good example of a character maturing into a more sensitive and empathetic human being, I would not have believed you. Uh, it honestly does. Now, co-writer, star and director Stiller has assembled a pretty mighty cast of talent for this film. Owen Wilson is a capably amiable foil as the laid-back young model Hansel who seems destined to take Zoolander's crown as the jewel of fashion, while Will Ferrell is at his scenery-chewing best as the scheming Magatu. And then you have the walk-ons and bit parts, uh, as saying minor roles in the film are Millie Jovovich camping up with Glee as the villainesque Tinker, David Duchovny as a conspiracy theorist hand model, Alexander Skarsgård as one of Zoolander's entourage, and John Voigt as Derek's father. Not to mention all the people playing themselves, or more accurately, satirically overstated versions of themselves. Natalie Portman, Lenny Kravitz, Gary Shandling, and over a dozen more make minor appearances. Though for me, the Piece de Resistance is David Bowie, who has a delightfully absurd and gleefully contrived cameo. Uh, this is a movie that could almost keep me engaged purely on the back of trying to spot all the famous faces. Some of the cameos haven't waged, aged as well as the others, given who they feature, but I don't think we can fault this movie for not predicting the distressing course of US politics over the last 20 years. 
Now, given the kind of content that I post, uh, it probably won't be a big surprise to learn that I'm something of a nerd. Uh, I play tabletop role-playing games, Pathfinder 2nd Edition being my system of choice at the moment. I read a lot of non-fiction history and popular science books for personal enjoyment. Uh, and most importantly for the purposes of this review, I'm familiar with many of the iconic science fiction movies and books from the 50s and later. And what does that have to do with Zoolander? Well, as I briefly alluded to at the start of this review, under this movie's surface level of buffoonery like freak gasoline fight accidents and Derek's inability to turn left, there's a surprising amount of deeply nerdy humour. Ben Stiller is not so secretly a big nerd himself. Uh, there's a lot of wordplay, some social satire, and deliberate riffs on both A Clockwork Orange and 2001 A Space Odyssey. The latter in particular got me laughing out loud in pleasure. Just really fun stuff if you're a decidedly nerdy kind of person. So yeah, Zoolander is smarter than it looks. It would almost have to be. Uh, and for me, at least, it was definitely one of those nice surprise movies that I enjoyed a lot more than I expected. Next time, uh, another silly movie that I enjoyed more than I expected, the 2002 comedy horror Fangs. But that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.